everybody, and welcome back to the Dallas Arts Organization International Podcast. This is our Dowie Talks Expert Series. My guest today is Frank E. Kyle III of the Shingy Martial Arts Club in Dayton, Ohio. Frank is a sun style Bagua and Tai Chi uh, practitioner. He also instructs in push hands and Nogi uh, Shua Jiao. He's one of four instructors at the Shingy Martial Arts Club in Dayton. Um, other uh, arts that are Taught there are three different styles of Xing Yi, as well as Chinese style weapons and Filipino martial arts. Hi, Frank. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Bill? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So standard question we ask everybody um, is how how did you get involved in the martial arts? Can you give us a little bit of your own personal background, how you got started? Um, yeah, I, I definitely can. Um, my story is a bit darker than others. Um I mean, I've I've had these table talks with other martial artists. Um, I started, my mom uh, was working. I needed an after-school program. There was a Taekwondo uh, program in the school uh, for after-school program. I started there. Um, I had the intent of wanting to learn to uh, defend myself. Um, however, um, the people harming me were not the people that you could defend yourself against. Yeah. Um, so uh, shortly after um, I was pulled out of that program and when I finally got older, uh, moved up north uh, up here to the Dayton area, I started taking a Kung Fu style. Um, was, it wasn't really legit of a Kung Fu style, um, I will say. Um, but it gave me a lot of sparring experience. Um, the lineage and things were all made up, but what I got out of it is I was a 14 year old, 15 year old kid thrown into sparring matches against adults. And I learned to just sink or swim. <laughs> um, but at the time, um, what I was looking for was to, uh, learn to fight. So that was like right up my alley. Um, later years, um, after that Kung Fu school kind of dissolved, um, I, I started looking all around the Dayton area and there are tons, I mean, absolutely tons of phenomenal martial artists in Dayton. I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you've got, uh, Stephen K. Hayes, um, Mr. Ninja himself, yeah. uh, is literally two miles from our club. Um, so we're blessed with a rich martial arts history here in Dayton. However, the Tai Chi community was lacking, very, very lacking. Um, I looked for a good year and a half for an internal um, style of Tai Chi with good, um, good lineage, good grasp of um, tradition. Um, and it I, I literally didn't find the school. Um, I found uh, my teacher's uh, resume online <laughs> for his acupuncture that he taught uh, Tai Chi and Xing Yi. So I called his acupuncture school, uh, well, acupuncture uh, clinic, and he said that he um, doesn't have a school, but he teaches certain evenings. Um, so I lucked into that. He didn't advertise I showed up for my first class and um, I said, you know, I want to learn this stuff. Um, and I, I plan to use it at the time I was working in security. Um, so I use what martial arts I learned in the past. Um, and he looked me right in the eye. He said, I can teach you the, the forms. I can teach you the structural alignment that you need for internal arts. Um, however, I'm not a fighter, but one of my teachers is. Um, and I'm like, oh, uh, then who's that? And he, he said, Tim Cartmel. And I, I looked into Tim and I'm like, OK, well, you can teach me this and then I'll start gleaning what I can from Tim when I can spend time with him. Yeah. A um, few years later, I I start going to Dan Miller's uh, little camp that he has Tim out yeah. to. And I meet Tim myself and I absolutely love Tim's teaching style and the way that he uh brings out his Bagua. And uh, I've been studying with Tim now seven years. Wow. And um, after the first seminar, I'm like, man, we've got to start doing these seminars with Tim uh, at our place. And then since then, we've been bringing Tim out for Bagua seminars um, and then private lessons, of course, 
um, the day before all those seminars. So we get time with our teacher as well. And uh, I do it just for the love of this art now. Like, um, I absolutely love standing grappling. Um, it's a passion of mine. Um, I didn't like it as a kid. I liked the striking, you know, <laughs> I like, I thought that was the way, the best way to end fights is just get in, hit them hard, hit them quick. And then I, I met Tim and I realized, you know, the earth hits a lot harder than I ever could. <laughs> so, um, and now I'm in it for kind of a love passion. I've, I've realized I have skills to handle myself against a normal population. And now it's just a, yeah. You know, now it's a hobby to keep me in health and I love it now. <laughs> wow. That's great. So you went straight from, you know, a style that maybe was not so legit to training with one of Tim's students. That's a kind of like you hit the jackpot, didn't you? I did. I absolutely hit the jackpot. But like I said, it took me forever to find yeah. that. It took me a year and a half of internet scrubbing and going places, sketchy places, even yeah. uh, <laughs> trying to learn. Yeah. Year and a half's not that long. That's not too bad. Um, so, so was it um what 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 exactly were you studying with Tim uh right off the bat was it sun style tai chi and bagua or did he teach you shingy as well um now with uh fritz uh i started learning the tai chi he had the tai chi um i got the form and he was like hey uh why don't you start learning shingy as well now i've only learned bagua straight from tim i okay. started learning the sun style of bagua directly from him um and that's been kind of my one of my passion projects um so uh i i would say that the sun tai chi started me on the journey and i read all of tim's books of course uh he's got a few books uh the study of tai chi chuan where he translated but then he has that uh curriculum book with uh choice tome uh that he did and uh really hard to find because it's out of print but um I have just about every piece of literature of Tim's as well that I've looked over for the Sun Tai Chi. Um, I ask him things when he comes in in the private lessons to clarify, but my Tai Chi was with Fritz. The Bagua was, is definitely with Tim um, and, of course, Sun's books and things because I always... And the reason I want to learn um, the three systems themselves and keep keep them going is because of what Madam Sun said you, uh, about the system. Uh, to know, understand his Taiji, you have to have a basic understanding of Bagua and Xing Yi, um, as well as Taoist philosophy. That's where I'm lacking. Now, I'll say I try to, I'm a person that cuts the spirituality out of it because I've been around um, religion pretty hard. I mean, uh, yeah. and then I've also been around where I've seen that the religious side changes it into a cultish kind of thing. And I'm very against that kind of, uh, yeah. that kind of scene. Yeah, that can happen. Um, but I definitely see after studying Bagua, the things that she was talking about where it influences the Taiji. Um, yeah. And with the Shang Xingyi that I've studied, I can see where the Xingyi has definitely uh, changed the way his Tai Chi is done as opposed to the other main branch systems yeah. uh, or main families. Yeah, for sure. And I would say that his, you know, his both his Tai Chi and his Bagua are a direct outgrowth of his, of his Xingyi. You know, he, he had his Xingyi and then he went out and learned Tai Chi and was like, what if we do, what if we do this with it, with the Xingyi flavor to it? So that's, that's one of the things that I think is nice about it. Um, and of course, you know, with the sun styles, um, you know, they kind of blend together, you know, like you, you have your Xingyi, Tai Chi and Bagua and, and you know, the, the movements and the applications kind of can be found in all three of those styles. So it's that's good. So when you were um, when you first so you, your Tai Chi teacher was Fritz, the, the first person that you studied with. Now, is he one of the teachers now at the Xingyi Martial Arts Club? Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> now, Fritz Froelich is um, the main uh he is the one with the most experience at the club uh, as teaching, but he is a uh, doctor of Chinese medicine and an acupuncturist. Uh, he's been, I also work in the clinic with him. Um, I have a degree in massage. I do Twi Na here in the clinic with, uh, with some folks that come in. Um, he spends a lot of time focusing on his passion, and that is the acupuncture. And he loves uh, Shingy. He still teaches a couple uh, days out of the month. Uh, he has a private group that 
after he sees that people have a basic understanding of the alignments and things like that, uh, he'll say, hey, this Sunday, I'm I'm doing two hours of training and shingy, and he'll do like pole shaking and all kinds of other shingy related exercises and teach shingy. Um, however, most of his time now is on the clinic, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> business owner, he, he's got to focus on that. Um, but he has 40 years of uh, martial arts uh, instruction. He's a student of Tim's and Ante Rong's, uh, who's late master that passed away, Baji uh, guy. Um, he studied a little with Mike Patterson, and he's a friend of Manuel Rodriguez. Um, he ta he's taught the other of us instructors at the club where we do the bulks of the teaching. He he gets that, uh, he, he likes to say it's that grandmaster status where he can just come in and let me show you, you know, let me show you where some corrections can be made and then he can sit and have some tea after a long day and then go home. Yeah. Um, and he has worked hard to uh, raise us up to have that. So um, we're giving him a place to hang out in his older age where he can sit and drink tea, watch Kung Fu, do Kung Fu. And he's happy to see us passionate about it. Um, and then uh, his three students that do the teaching, there's uh, myself, there's Don Dory, and then there's Kelly Miller. Um, Kelly Miller heads up more of the Balinta Walk and the Filipino side. Um, Don Dory, uh, he has, I think it's 40 something years himself. Um, Korean and Chinese arts. He started uh, with um, the Korea, some of the Korean arts with his uncle, and then started studying uh, different styles of Tai Chi. He studied uh, he studied Chen, Yang, and Sun. Um, he studied Gao style Bagua, um, and has a whole different lineage as well that kind of comes together with Fritz and me. Um, and then, of course, he studies with Tim. When we bring him out, uh, you know, uh, Tim te Tim teaches all of us there at the Shingy Club. Sure. Um, so it's just we have such a we have so many people that from so many different backgrounds. Um, I would say we're unique in the fact that we try to raise our students to become training partners because we that's the only way we can grow is to raise the training partners it's not a they just appear kind of thing that's so uh, like that's random so we teach with the love that we're raising training partners and then people that will maybe teach someone else one day um this stuff so we have to we're being kind of selfish in that fact that we're teaching you the good stuff so you can use it against us so we get better. And, you know, yeah. it's just steel sharpened steel. Yeah. Like, so if you treat your students like, you know, they're just profit and everything like that, and you're trying to milk them along, skills not really built. There's a total difference. And that's why I'm a club. It's not a it's not a school. It's not a uh, I, I've been around the traditional. I've seen some of the stuff I didn't like. And I just axed that and said, you know, some modernism has to step up, like modern teaching methods for the way, like the way people learn here in the West is different than the East. And it's like, who am I teaching? I teach mostly adults. Majority of my students are all older than me. I have doctors, I have surgeons, I have engineers, um, people that have very, very, very high IQs. And they, they just, you know, they want to know the technical details. They want to know all the things like that. So I don't teach kids. Yeah. But my dad on the other end in his school in Bluffton, he has all kids and no adults. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like it's a I'm trying to attract future training partners and people that will push me and help me grow to that next level. Um, so I don't hold anything back kind of thing. There's no secrets anymore. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I think that's why a lot of people start teaching, you know, uh, most of us, I, I think, if we're being honest with ourselves, don't feel like we really know that much. So we want to keep continuing to learn. But eventually, you know, you need practice. You need partners. You need people to train. Mm -hmm. with, and, you know, so that's that's how these things grow and get passed along. So the uh, the club itself, could you maybe describe because you have so many different styles available, uh, things to learn from? How what what would somebody expect to experience if they contacted you and wanted to train with you? Would you do you have like different things on different days or do you all teach on the same days? How does that work? 
We have different things on different days. When someone calls me and asks, or uh, I, I give everybody free lessons in every class, every one of my classes, just come to one, experience it, because I don't have an advanced intermediate kind of class. Yeah. Um, if you're intermediate or advanced, I'm also teaching you to teach, right? So if you've if you've got this section down, you and I are going to help teach the and show the finer details. Then now it's time for me to show you how to properly give structure testing and all kinds of other things and the things that you need to feel for. Um, so I don't mix, you know, classes on skill level because everybody has something that they can give on to someone else. Uh, but I do separate subject matter. Um, that way, if uh, like I'll take my uh, one of my military guys that comes in, uh, he's a major and he has to stay in shape for his job, everything like that. He, he came to me already in shape, already knows the kettlebells that I like so much. I love kettlebells. Um, and I, I taught him for a few months the Cal the Shinini Gong calisthenic set that Tim, yeah. uh, Tim and Dan Miller uh, did. And that's the one I use for my calisthenics and Nagon. I uh, taught him that system and he got to a point he has part of his at home workout. Right. So he's coming to learn. So I, I looked at my classes and I said, you know, I'm going to separate the calisthenics because that is physical health. Some people need to be led through that and taught a system of health maintenance. Um, he has that so he can skip that portion um, kind of thing. So I started breaking my classes into like 50 minutes. So I start with calisthenics and warm ups. Um, people that need it can come. And then the next class is the subject matter, whether it's the Tai Chi form kind of thing where I'm teaching the form with structure alignment, uh, the stepping patterns and representative applications, or if it's like a Tuesday push hands where it is full on standing grappling. So, and I'm showing applications as well under the guise of the Bagua, the Shingi and the Tai Chi, like here's the movement. Right. Um, we're going to show, I'm going to show you several applications for this movement. We're going to drill it. And then we're just going to move to live play. If the opportunity comes up, I want to see you land it. If not, don't. I spar with all my students. I push hands with every single one of my students, almost every class, as long as I'm not hurt. Um, so sometimes I even just get up in there and show them that same technique we drilled. And I'll just sit there and keep just using it on them until they realize, you know, <laughs> I want them to do the same thing. I'll show them, I'll give them a setup. If they miss that, I'll turn around and use the technique against them. I said, you keep missing your window, but it's safe. It's playful. Um, Cause I, like I said, I first learned the swim or die, you know, you're in the pool. I learned nothing other than how to survive. Right. So it, I learned to cover and do things that would keep you alive in a fight, but I wasn't learning the technical skill of someone slowing it down to that grapple, almost grappling pace, because striking and grappling are at two different paces. Right. But slowing down the intensity and still teaching in those moments. Like I gave you the opportunity. You fed me the the you fed me the opportunity for me to give that. I want you to identify the things you did wrong, the things, the missed opportunities, but you can't do that going full speed and getting hit full, full force, right? You get hit in the face, all that planning disappears, as Mike yeah. Tyson says. Yeah, right. So would the ability to learn something in that moment, unless you have a camera and you can look at it later and go, okay, this is what I did wrong. Yeah. But most of us don't film ourselves getting our butts kicked in sparring practice. It's just practice and we hope to learn in the moment kind right. of thing. So, you know, obviously Tim is, you know, kind of a grappling genius. Do you guys uh, integrate that at all into your teaching? Like ground? Oh, fight? absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, ground fighting, I teach his ground proofing level one stuff. Yeah. I refresh it with the guys that take the seminars when we bring him out for the seminars. Um, I, I also look at his effortless combat throws as still another genius. Classic. Tiffany of, yeah. uh, of. What about from the perspective of the guy that falls down? That, I mean, that's just yeah. was a genius perspective uh, flip there. Um, I approach the same things that he teaches in the effortless combat throws, the dead angles, the same things that he talks about in the Tai Chi to uplift and then lead them to the ground. 
Um, all of those things play intricate roles in the stuff I'm teaching, as well as some of the things that I've learned from my own father, um, Frank Jr. Um, he's two-time world champion in Swaijiao uh, under David Lin, who passed away. Um, my dad was also part of uh, Shaolin Lavelle's black belt test and got him belted for uh, Swai Zhao uh, down there in South Carolina. Um, the stuff that dad's taught me, I have adjusted um, to the push hands kind of game that I like to play, which is I like to call no gi Swai Zhao. Um, it's about no gripping the clothing or anything like that, but I can still throw you um, with just my structure, my alignment. Um, and then the grips are changed from instead of grabbing the clothes, I may underhook and grab maybe at the base of the tricep. I add some of my um, I also add some of my anatomy from the massage background. I'll sometimes pinch the muscle heads and things like that just so that it, it causes extreme pain and puts the mind there but it also takes the ability to the mu muscle to function and fire at its full capacity. So it's kind of like, they're trying to think that why am I weak here? So their brain is fully there. They get double weighted in their mind kind of thing on that. And then I I'll attempt my, my actual go-to technique that I'm going to. Um, but the setups, like my dad's taught me the throws I've had to adjust. Um, when I was learning push hands, I had to, I, I learned from a chin perspective, um, a lot of push hands because I, there's a big chin prominence in Columbus, uh, that was in the Arnold and things like that. So I went and learned some chin style, uh, push hands and the Dalu and things like that to flush out my full understanding of Tai Chi's, uh, original push hands kind of curriculum. Um, and then I I just adjusted. You have to make adjustments uh, when you when you do sports like the push hands at the Arnold and things like that. You have to make adjustments for the rules. Um, and then during those adjustments, I was like, wow, these no grip throws the work so well for like no gi jiu jitsu. They work great for police officers that might have a naked suspect, <laughs> you know, high on drugs that has no clothes you can grab. Um, and it was when one jujitsu guy came to me, he was like, look, I'm doing, uh, MMA. Um, I see that you guys bring Tim out and stuff. He's like, can you show me some of those combat throws and stuff? Um, because I tried judo, the gi throws don't work for me. We, none of us are wearing gis whatsoever. Um, just show me some of these quick takedowns. Um, and I showed him a few throws that, leave him in a setup position that he has control of a limb, which is what he was looking for, um, choosing the right way to take someone down to benefit his uh, main system. Um, but if I give him throws that land him in a perfect arm bar setup, you know, he's, he's loving that as opposed to, oh, well, there's no gi here. Now what do I do? And same time, guys punching him in the face. So the adjustments needed to be made. Um, but again, modernizing everything, uh, it will come down to that. Like what I'm wearing, just a t-shirt, it's hard to grab hold of. They tear real easy. Right. If you've ever tried some of those Swai Zhao throws, they'll tear real easy. Um, so I'm kind of happy with the work that I kind of stumbled through. It wasn't an epiphany I had. It was just, wow, they, like these kinds of throws work in such a huge dynamic. And then I was like, I wonder, and then one night I even threw boxing gloves on. I'm like, I wonder if I can do these in boxing gloves. And I was like, oh, sure enough. <laughs> like, if you don't need a grip, you don't need to, right. you don't need your hands. Right. You you mentioned um, that uh, you teach uh, Chinese weaponry also. Um, mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about that? What sorts of weapons do you teach? Who teaches? Uh, just the main four. Um, staff, Spear, uh, Dao, and Jin. Um uh, me and a couple people are going through the Sun Gen set, set now. Um, one time when Tim was here, we started working on some of the uh, Bagua sword that he got uh, while he was there. Uh, but definitely not one of Tim's focuses, but he does have some stuff that he learned while he was there. Um, Fritz and I, uh, well, Fritz is a student of Scott Rodell's as well. Yeah. Um, and I plan to be going to a seminar at the start of May in Indiana with Scott, uh, with some of the other competitor guys that I've 
uh, met throughout the years at the Arnold. Um, the the Indiana group, uh, we call them the Indiana group. Uh, there's three three guys there that uh, are Scott Rodell students are diving into uh, kind of swords play and swordsmanship. Um, so since Fritz is a um, student of Scott's, he's like, why don't you come meet Scott? I'm like, okay. I'm not a, too big of a weapons guy. I I learn them just because they're a great training tool um, there and everything like that. But I, I would rather just use my hands. Um, yeah. You put a weapon in my hand, I, I feel like I lose like 50 IQ points uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Like my brain just is like, what do I do with this? Um, and I just prefer empty hand. That's just, yeah. just me. It's not a basis of my training, but I teach it because it's in the systems. Uh, we teach basic spear work uh, with pole shaking, lan uh, naza, basic drills. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do line drills and show and for some force play where you can feel that you're going around the force of the spear, knocking it offline. Um, and then bringing that into play with the empty hands of how Shingy's strategy is, you know, you, ch you fight for that structural alignment and then you change the angle and drive in. Um, well, the weapons are a great tool to feel that huge force multiplied um, kind of thing. So they're really good training tools. Um, we want to see the Sword League get put back together. Fritz would love to see that. Um, I would love to see it just because it's more martial arts. Uh, it's more of um, traditional that worked. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd love to see that uh, brought back and alive. Um, however, that's more of Fritz's, um, you know, puppy. <laughs> and mine is more of empty hand work kind of thing. Uh, but that's a, that's about the weapons that we teach. We don't uh, we don't get fancy with uh, the you know the unique weapons like the hammers and things right. like that. Um, cool if you do. I mean that's traditional too, and it needs to be kept alive, kind of thing. But uh, typically the systems we deal with have mostly just uh, those main four weapons. Um, and really the only one that's interested me are the deer knives, those deer hook knives that are in some Bagua systems. Yeah. They're not in the sun, yeah. but, um, Gao has them and a few other systems have those butterfly, uh, kind of knives, those, uh, deer hook knives. I think double weapons are really cool. <laughs> yeah, they are cool. Uh, you, you mentioned that you have a Filipino, uh, teacher there too, a Filipino style teacher. Uh, are, yes. I, I'm assuming that weapons are a part of uh, that curriculum. Uh, yes, they are under that curriculum. Kelly Miller is the one that heads it up here in the Dayton. He is a student of Tim's. He studied uh, He studied with Tim some a little bit of Bagua back in 1819, right before COVID uh, slowed us down. And when that happened, he switched focuses over to the uh, Balenta Walk under Bobby Tabwata. Oh, okay. um, and uh, he also teaches a little FCS Um they're out of the club. Of course, they're teaching the stick. They're teaching knives. They're teaching um, some knife defense systems and stuff for it's like prison knife defense kind of stuff um, that those Filipino guys. I'm I'll be honest again, put a weapon in my hand. I just am like, what? <laughs> so I've taken classes with Kelly before seen the way he moves. I will say his movement moves differently than everybody else because of his Shingy and Tai Chi background with Fritz. Yeah. Um, so he's moving slightly different, um, but it, it, it is good stuff that works. I mean, it, he, he could be, he could beat me down with a stick for sure. <laughs> like, so what he's doing works. Um, but they teach the, you'd have to ask him more specifically the differences between their styles of blades. I'm not a big Filipino, um, expert. I love dealing with other styles of martial arts, other systems or origins um i like i but a lot of mine standing grappling i love watching sumo i love watching um videos of some mongolian bach that i see come come through and i love swai Zhao, um all that kind of stuff i love seeing striking uh arts with sambo and stuff um but the filipino stuff is just out of my realm of expertise because it is a weapon-based system weapons right. first right <laughs> yeah 
It's good stuff. I really enjoy the Filipino. Oh, there's food. nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, you, you talked about, you know, enjoying like standing grappling and things like that. One of the things that I've noticed when I, you know, train with some other Shingy people is that, um, you know, there's a lot of throws in Shingy and people don't think about it as being a throwing art. You know, they think about it as being a striking art, but almost every movement that you make can be either a strike or a throw. Do you teach a lot of like throws out of in your, in your Shingy at all? If I were to break down, I do most of the stuff I teach is about 80% throws. Shingy yeah. included the Bagua. Um, striking to me, um, you should learn some basics of striking, and it's in Shingy, Bagua, and Tai Chi. They're there, elbow strokes and things like that. They're they're in there, but a predominant uh, the predominant base of Tai Chi, Shingi, Bagua is standing grappling. The way a smaller person beats a bigger person is not through striking. Like uh, until you are a certain mass level, you can't knock someone out. Like, you know, you, you don't have the, uh, the mass to times it by the acceleration to equal the force to knock them out. Um, so the only way a smaller person has is the other methods of fighting. And that is trying to throw them to the floor to injure them. Um, but it's not going to be, um, you know, someone like Sun Lutong size or someone even Tim size, like 140, 150, trying to knock out a 300 pound man with strikes. I mean, they just eat them all day, right? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so you have to find other methods. That's why when people tell me like, oh, Tai Chi is a striking art. It's like, well, yeah, you could stroke someone across the face with an elbow. But what's one of the main principles to break their root and throw them to the ground, right? So uh, throwing someone to the floor ends a fight. Making them hop doesn't make them end a fight, uh, anything right. like that. Right. So like uh, the way I approach push hands, tai chi, things like that is um, very much looks like no gi judo, no gi swai zhao. And that's really what it is. All the principles that we could sit down, open the classics. We can talk about the principles. All of them have a lot more uh, base for wrestling than they do striking. Right. Um, and if you have a basic understanding of all those levels of combat from going from striking to standing grappling to the floor, uh, you'll realize that striking is pretty basic but the main goal is to make contact with that person and then then it's now grappling right and, and that, that's what a lot of people miss is that you know a, a fight is not like a boxing match where, where people are there's this on and off exchange that goes on over a period of time you you throw a couple punches and then you're grappling whether you want to be grappling or not you know you're grappling yes um, so it's important to know how to do that stuff um uh, I wanted to ask too, you know, you, you guys have got three different styles of Xing Yi that you're teaching there. Um, could, could you break that down for us just a little bit, like who teaches what and, 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 and uh, you know, the differences between them as you see it? Uh, I can, that's an easy one to answer. Fritz teaches all, all three that he knows. Oh, okay. I teach, I just teach my shoot, student Shang style um, because that's the one I've studied with, with Fritz is Shang. Um and I only teach my students the five elements in the linking set because that's that basic understanding of Xing Yi. Right. Because my focus is the Tai Chi and the Bagua. Here's a basic understanding. If you want more Xing Yi, Fritz. <laughs> like I just push them to Fritz and it's like, Fritz, here's your new student, right? Um, so it's, we try to find, and the t when someone comes in, they they may start with me teaching them, but they may feel more inclined to study with D or with Fritz. I take no gripe in it. Um, everybody has their speciality and ways that they convey messages. We all have different teaching styles. So if one person can connect to a student better than the other, that's who I want them with. Yeah. Uh, right. So like, oh, I'd love to be that teacher that has a thousand students. But if I only get 20 people that, you know, connect with me and can learn from me, um, but still obtain the skills that they desire and the skills that, you know, they can pass on. Great. That's, <laughs> you know, great. Yeah, that's the best way to look at it. So do you does does everybody's students train together at any point besides times when Tim comes up or. um Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, 
most of um, most of the students that I'm training, the ones that work with like Fritz on the Sundays, still work with me in the other classes. Yeah. Um, D comes and teaches uh, in my classes with me, um, which I don't mind at all. Uh, he helps me, like, cause um, I try to focus on small group classes. I mean, my my classes don't get over 12, 14 people, so I try to. Um, if I find like if I'm teaching a student and this student's just kind of blank facing me like ah, and they try it and they're still not kind of getting it, I'll be like, hey, D, come here. Maybe you can explain this to him. Maybe maybe something that maybe the way you understand it and your brain breaks it down makes it click. And then I'll you know, he'll work with him and then I'll go work with someone else on something on something else on what they're having troubles with. Um or what I've set them the task for, because sometimes I'll just set a student the task and be like, OK, I want you like we use a fuse ladder. We have a fuse ladder, which is a spring pulley system. I'll be like, practice your footwork under this spring tension. Right. So you keep this tension in the spring, this really tight tension. If you let the tension go, it's going to yank you back into the wall. And I'll be like, till I come back forward, retreat, sidestepping, you know, just keep going through your footwork under tension. One, it builds good uh, leg strength and balance, you know, everything like that. But uh, it's just some people, you got to keep drilling them. Uh, Americans have ADHD where we want instant gratification and you got to keep. So sometimes I just got to keep coming back around, restarting the task, keeping them on task kind of thing. And uh, D helps um, some of my more advanced students. Uh, I have one that is almost to an instructor, like I'm ready to give them an instructor level. Uh he studied chin style for 16 years, came to me only for the push hands. And then after about a month and a half of uh, push hands, he's like, teach me the sun system. Like what you're doing is like so like different than the chin method. Um, and then he's studied all of that. He's done the Bagua with Tim, does Bagua with me, um, does the Shingi with Fritz on Saturdays and been with me for three and a half, four years now. Um, and he'll be moving in 2025 to go to Virginia. Um, and we're trying to connect him with Scott Rodell uh, to work sword stuff once he leaves us. Um, so, I mean, if I if they can't be my student forever, I know. But, yeah. you know, at least keep the connections open uh, to good people. Yeah. It sounds like you guys have got like a really good thing going there. I like the fact that you have such a emphasis on, um, you know, reality based training. I think that's something that's, that's missing quite a bit in the types of martial arts that we do these days. Um, you know, what question that I like to ask everyone, um, is what, what do you think the future of these arts is? Where do you see things going specifically with your club? Hmm. The, the purists that won't change will die. We live in a world that if you won't change, if you absolutely won't change, you will just die clinging to the past um, because everybody will evolve around you <laughs> and move on. You'll be le left behind. Um, so there has to be a side of modernization, but also care the balance of keeping tradition, right? Because there's some things that could die these old superstitions like things that we know aren't real like just let them die and then uh you know focus your training on stuff that works um i forget which general which judo kai it was but uh the famous quote the mat's the truth right yeah. um in, in a world where everybody looks to martial arts to learn martial arts the mat's the truth does it work like and if you move away from things that work, uh, it's just it's going to die as a martial art, um, as a health cultivation and health side of things. All right. I come from Sun System. He is the one that made that statement that says Tai Chi is great for your health. Right. right. And it seemed like everybody and their brother wanted to jump on that train um, for health, for health, for health. And then it lost the meaning of martial arts. A fighter, if you look at any fighter, they're in shape, whether they have a little pudge on them, like post fight, like they go crazy with pizza, they got a little chub on them, right. uh, fluffiness, eh, they're still in great shape because they trained, they train martial arts, right? 
Um, I think that's what he actually meant. And it wasn't, you know, you just do slow movements every day. It's the pinnacle of health. Let's, let's look at this as the, you know, end all be all to your health problems. Um, and you can, you, you can get healthy, but if you're teaching for health, be honest that you're only teaching for health and then also be healthy. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. That's another thing. That's the bad. beer guts and the 300 pound teachers have got to stop saying this is the greatest health exercise. And you can't back that up with showing them your own health. I mean, I used to be 300 pounds at one point in my life. I got oh. into a huge depression. I've dropped 140 pounds. Right. And it was like, you know, if you're if you're training martial arts, you won't be you, not for not if This is your true passion. You're not going to you're training your body to change, adapt, and to be more proficient at a physical task. You will lose weight. You will, you know, you'll be more coordinated and everything like that. You don't get all of that with just waving your arms around in the park. You do work up a sweat. You get a little bit of range of motion. Um, Cause I mean, I teach it. I teach some Nagong to people for just range of motion. 70 year old comes to me. Okay, I'm not going to teach her, you know, break falls first, right. <laughs> that kind of thing. But range of motion is her. Uh, she might have a frozen shoulder, and we'll break apart that with range of motion. Um, but then I quickly work to dynamic tension, building strength, and things like that. Um, but the way some of these people are approaching it for just for health and trying to build these cult followings, if if they're good salesmen, it'll live. If not, that'll die. Yeah. That's a sales thing, um, to yeah. be honest, because in healthcare, that's the majority of what gyms and everything. Can I sell you something? Can I sell you something? Uh, Charles Atlas did us one of the biggest favors ever with his book on dynamic tension. <laughs> you don't need a gym, right. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, he was jacked right. and he didn't lift weights all that much. <laughs> right. So fitness industry is full of just salesmen just trying to sell you products, trying to sell you all kinds of stuff. Um, and that's part of why I don't push all the for health stuff. I tell them, look, you come here, you train, you'll get healthier. You know, you work out two, three times a week for two, three hours. You know, you've met your baseline quota that any doctor tells you you should be getting. Absolutely. Some people can't work out by themselves. So come to class and I can lead you through the workout and hold, help hold you accountable kind of thing. But you'll get healthy practice in the martial arts that's, right that's my take on it yeah i i agree and I, I think that the more that they're practiced as martial arts the healthier you'll get you know if you practice them as closely as you can to what they were originally intended for you're going to get that much more of a benefit i would i will add to that too if you practice it as a martial art that's the only way to defend your health that's true too yeah <laughs> multiple fronts well, Frank, we're just about out of time. Would you like to tell people where they can find you at? Absolutely. We're uh, working on a website, but we do have a Facebook, the Shinyi Martial Arts Club. We're located in Dayton, Ohio. Um, my uh, contact information is there on Google and on Facebook um, that you can find us. As we uh, grow, I will eventually have the funds to have that website <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and then in the future, I'm also working on other projects for this club. Um, and I always have seminars twice a year with Tim. Um, I, when my dad retires, I'll have Swai Zhao seminars with my dad. Um, and then, um, hopefully, uh, I can start adding a few other people through the years. And when I meet other connections that I can have other instructors come out and teach and teach us good things. Um, and in the future, I'm also working on Bagua videos of the past seminars, and I've talked with Tim. Um, I hope to one day have um, the Sun Style Bagua as taught by Tim Cartmel in our club, um, where it's kind of him teaching and then me teaching it as well. So, I, so you get to see different generations of teachers now that we have videos um, to keep this stuff alive kind of thing. Um, but we just want to keep it, keep the true spirit of the martial arts alive and the traditional Chinese martial arts because uh, the reputation is kind of poor right now. <laughs> it really is. 
Well, it sounds like you're doing your part to, to restore that and, and to keep things going. And uh, I really appreciate your efforts in that. And I uh, hope everybody gives you a, a, checks you out on Facebook. De definitely worth looking into. Absolutely. I, I hope to as well. Um, our club has many talented people, many talented teachers, um, associate teachers that we associate with. And I mean, even one of our students, uh, this wow. is hand done <laughs> Beautiful. right here. He's a fifth Don in uh, Japanese calligraphy and a teacher of different calligraphy styles. And I mean, we've got people of all different skills just coming together in this club that is trying to keep these traditional arts alive. Awesome. Frank E. Kyle the third, everybody, uh, Shingy Martial Arts Club, Dayton, Ohio. Check them out. Thanks for. <laughs>